my name is Saint Akona. Uh, this testimony is about my brother. He got sick last year in Eastern Cape. I think it was around September, October, when they told me that uh, he's sick. I advised that he comes down to Cape Town. In my mind, usually when people move from, when they get sick in Eastern Cape, they will move to Cape Town because of hospitals and all that stuff. But in my mind, I had Papa because I knew whatever he was going through, it was demonic. When he arrived uh, in Cape Town, I took him to the doctors. They checked, they couldn't detect what was wrong with him. They also said maybe it might be prostate cancer. He told me that the doctors said he's much younger to have such sickness. Usually the prostate cancer affects elderly people. He kept on going to the doctors. Then on the 2nd of December, he was hospitalized. They finally diagnosed him that he's suffering from prostate cancer. They were telling us that the cancer is aggressive. The cancer is affecting every bone of his body. And during that time, Papa was busy with the prayer retreat in USA. And we were praying that time, workers, and as a family, we were praying, and we were pushing, we were prevailing, sons of God. In my prayers, I was saying, you grave, you're not gonna swallow my brother. The ants will not eat my brother's body. I was roaring. There was no Christmas for us because we were in prayers. And I trusted this anointing because I told myself whether Papa is here or not, but the anointing of this house, I believe in. My brother is gonna be fine. From 2nd of December, he was lying in hospital, was admitted in Khrotiskir. My brother, sons of God, he was, he was sick. He couldn't move. The sheet was wet and we were asking, why now? Why is it wet? There were lots of things now that were happening. And then when I was at work, the hospital called. They said they want a family meeting. We went to this family meeting. It was the doctors first telling us about his sickness. They told us uh, the cancer is serious. It's aggressive affected every area in his body where there's bones it attacks it even attacked his spine he can never walk again he was in nappies he couldn't urinate and because the source of the skin it's in the testicles they have to remove the testicles and it's going to affect his whole life like men would. It's something that is going to traumatize him maybe for life. If, they said, if he survives. So he must go for surgery. And I said, no. After we were done with the doctors, the palliative care staff came to prepare us for his passing. There was a particular nurse there. Uh, she was saying that um, even if the doctors are suggesting that he must go for operation, that is not going to help because the cancer has already spread all over his body. <laughs> My goodness, this God, this God. She even said that, guys, do you know how expensive it is the body to move the body from Cape Town to Eastern Cape? I just looked at him and I told him that keep on confessing that you will never die. You're not gonna die. You're gonna live. You're gonna wake up. Even imagine, imagine yourself waking up from this bed, living a normal life. You're not gonna die. After the meeting, I still push on, I still pray, and the family, we were roaring, we were warring, we were praying, we believed in God, and the other thing is the oil, anointing oil. I said, like gonna anoint you, like my sister would take the oil and anoint him and rub him, the legs and rub every area like the body, the back. My sister said you can't treatment if I oil. 
he was not even spraying the oil he was eating it that time we put the oil in the water that he was drinking i said when they serve you uh, food spray this food with this oil he was using oil i kept on visiting him in hospital on this particular day when you were visiting him in hospital he he told us that yo i was in a vision and i saw papa he was wearing white with a like long coat absolutely being who you got when in chair cries in floor i couldn't hear what he was saying but i saw him eh why my busy bantu I said, you know what, Papa was here to deliver you. You are coming out of this hospital. And I was for a very long time, but I had to tell you, I was going to go to November. November, December, I was going to December. But again, the soil is going to go to the hospital. I was going to go to December. I was going to go to Open by it and go in the toilet. What do we do? We just want to go to the toilet. We are going to the toilet. That's why I pack up my millions of things. There was this particular day when we arrived there. My brother now we see here. Yeah, he could like sit up now, and I'm like, my goodness, look at this God. Now they started to to bring him the 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 crutches. Kandi bona ngani ba ibandi ngawazo ziyambela because ndi yama ngale ndi support ay ngawazo ziyambela ah nda ziyambela There was a recovery slowly and I like oh look at this god look at this god of pastor John sons of god on the 27th of December the hospital called us that they gonna discharge my brother without performing any surgery like they didn't remove the testicles is in perfect health the nappies He could go to the bathroom and bath himself. He can urine, <laughs> urinate by himself. My brother can walk. And the ambi nanga wole will say ndi zwa ndi ambi nanga zonto ezo crushes ndi zwa ambi nanga. Ndi akwazo zikamela ngoko yongo. Ayi kola ndo ayi siti ndi zwa kwazo zino tsama. Ayi ndi strong There was no balega ho ndina landi ngubani uvike kusend it robject so za muchikeleza ndi kwanqela ne no balega I was surprised this morning as we were coming to church he asked if can we pass by the ATM you want to use an ATM and then I was sitting in the car he didn't walk to the ATM he was running and I was inside as I was sitting in the car looking at him I praise God I said the person that they thought we gonna bury him december this person is alive the person that they said is not gonna walk again he's not even walking he's running the person that they said is not gonna make it the spine is affected he's in perfect health as what we had i gone man za lens ixesha kulenya last year kodwa ngo wa man ndingani ngalenzi kanjani kwesha kubona ngo ku april ngo the palliative care staff they keep on calling me they still can't believe if my brother is still alive they still calling me if they didn't call they would send me whatsapp to check up on my brother if he's still fine like i said no my brother is in perfect health so sons of god my brother is here He comes to church every Sunday. He is in health. He is in health sons because of the anointing of this house because of Pastor John. I thank God Almighty for Pastor John Anusike. I thank God Almighty for sending the prophet in South Africa. He, he is what we need. Is alive today because we have a prophet in Cape Town in South Africa in Western Cape. impossible 
Death impossible.